Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Number 623 from Isaiah 49, 6 two, three. <clears throat> I will never forget you, my people. I have carved you on the palm of my hand. I will never forget you, I will not leave you orphan. I will never forget my own. Does a mother forget her baby? Or the woman within her womb? Yet even if these forget, yet even if these forget, I will never forget my Welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. We celebrate the Feast of St. Irenaeus. And for a moment, let's presence ourselves amid the presence deep within us and all around us. Let go of anything that takes our mind or our heart away from where our feet are in this assembly of God's people. For the Lord has gathered us together to praise him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Mass is being offered for the intention of the members of the Society of the Little Flower. We also have a memorial intention for Maria Damien and for Ruby, Rudy Lehman. And so as we gather before the Word of God this morning, Let's for a moment reflect on the ways we don't kind of trust that God really is in our life, the times we think God has forgotten us or we feel abandoned and somehow don't believe that he's really on our side and ask the Lord for the embrace of divine mercy. Holy God, because of our disappointments and hurts and wounds of and dis uh, disillusions with life sometimes, we feel abandoned and we feel like you have abandoned us and aren't with us. And we ask your forgiveness as we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us unto life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who called the Bishop St. Irenaeus to confirm true doctrine and peace of the Church, grant, we pray, that through his intercession, that being renewed in faith and charity, we may always be intent on fostering unity and, and peace. And we ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as our one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless? And has as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so 
one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, Shall your descendants be? Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I have possessed it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and place each half opposite the other. But the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, ter terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking firepot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O heart that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgment prevail. The Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Just so every good tree bears good fruit, and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruits you will know them. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, Abram, as he was called to leave his home in Haran, and would go to a new place and to trust God, did it actually, was amazing. In his old age, leaves his wife and his family, or takes his wife and his family and gathers and moves across over to Canaan, and, which he didn't own. But he, he felt the promise was that you will possess this land, you'll have a son, and become a great and a mighty nation, and be a light to the nations. It's interesting, but what's happening is he gets frustrated. He thinks it's true. I'm sure his wife was arguing with, what are we leaving now in our old age? We should be staying here. We're not moving to Florida, you know? 
and uh, in that whole thing. And so what, what's interesting, and you can see him along the way, though, that God works slowly. And I think we've all learned that sometimes, that God seems to be, have a lot more time in his hands to do things than we do, and yet he, he is faithful to his promises, although he's wondering. And he said, fear not, because he's saying, you know, I didn't get a kid like he, you told me. I don't have a son to have a, a progeny in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a Ray Blake's family. And so I'm looking at, you know, I'm, we're childless, you know, and so, and God says, trust me, trust me. I told you it's not them. Don't try to work this out yourself. I will provide a child. And I think it's important. You can see him doubting and wondering and yet trying to trust. And I think, and then giving up and he says, okay. And then he says, look, I'm the, your shield. I will make your reward very great if you trust me. And it's hard to, for any of us to trust God. And I'll give you this land as an inheritance, you'll possess it. And, and then he makes an interesting vision there. It's something they do in the Middle East sometimes. They always want to ritualize these things. Just always a shake of the hand. We like a written document and we want a contract, don't we? <laughs> But there it was a handshake or some ritual. And the ritual is one they use, and it's there. So suddenly he takes these animals, he splits them in two, and then goes to the end, and he's watching. What's going on here? And then the fire goes through it. And he said, I'd rather be split in two than break my word to you. That's God, who ultimately was split in half or was cut open, you know, and killed for us. And I think so. He, it's always wrestling with how do we trust God who... who fulfills our promises, fills the promises he made to all of us. That's the first part of that. And I think we have to look at that. I think as we go through life, so much this disappoints us, you know, and we get down about it. We don't totally trust God. In fact, I think a lot of times, I know when I pray, I used to tell God how to be God, and then I went about did it myself because he never got around to it. You know, it's like, then he says, well, you didn't want to do it. You, you didn't think I was going to do it anyways. You don't trust me. Why should I do it? If you want to do it yourself, you know. Or God, but God, I think one thing we've all learned is God answers our prayers according to God's will, not always in our way, what we wanted. I'm sure you've all had experiences sometimes when you prayed for one thing and something else happened, and you learn later in life that was a better thing. You know, it wasn't the immediacy of the need, and that's important. And then there's this other thing here that Matthew's addressing, because people were going off trying to misunderstand Jesus even later. Beware of false prophets who, who don't tell you the truth. The truth is revealed by God. They create their own truth out of their own fears and securities, their own, you know, um, their own, you know, things they're angry about in life. And we're all frustrated by life. Life can be cruel sometimes or just frustrating. And sometimes you project it on other people. And then, of course, what happened, and you get it even this time, you know, so they could be ravenous wolves. You know people by their fruit. Do we work for peace, forgiveness, love, acceptance, and inclusion? Or we do look for exclusion and hatred and, you know, and, and lack of forgiveness, of so vengeance and violence, which we do sometimes. We freeze people out and, you know, become ravenous wolves. And he said, and he says, look, I planted you here to be good fruit. By your fruits you will know people. And you've got to know that. It's always interesting how duplicitous we are. We can come to Mass, we feel like we're loyal Catholics, and we hate this, we don't like that group, we don't want them included, blah, blah, blah. We get very uninclusive and very, we segregate out who's good and who's bad and who belongs, or even our own families, our own churches, our own society. It's not our problem to help them. You know, and I'm sure God says, what the heck's going on here? They're all my children. All eight billion belong to me. Why don't you understand that? Well, you know, they're not Catholic. They're not, you know, they're not white. And all this stuff we get into. And so I think we have to look at that. How much? Because he said, look, remain in me as I in you, and, and you'll bear much fruit. And I think if we're plugged into Christ, into the presence that is always deep, present deep within us and all around us, it changes your attitude about everything. Most of the time, we're about our needs and our fears and our insecurities and our hurts and wounds. And you know, if you don't let the hurts, you don't let those hurts and wounds transform us and wake us up to the big message of God's presence and God's love and God's mercy and God's inclusiveness. You know, if you don't let it transform you, we transmit it to others, and that's why we're fighting and people are tense and separating, and we all get angry about things. And our society keeps fostering that even more. You know, the, one of the beautiful things about Irenaeus, and he was a bishop and he was a martyr, but he's the great line you've heard so often. You know, it says, um, the glory of God is a person fully alive. 
See, there was a struggle whether Jesus, how much he had transformed humanity. And, and his whole doctrinal issue was, God transformed humanity. We are the beloved sons and daughters of God. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. Any other identity doesn't exist in God's mind. He loves us because he loves us, not because of what we do or don't do. He simply loves us because God is good, period. That's what the good news is about. But, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, you got to do that, blah, 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 blah. Or people look miserable. You know, Jansenism always felt basically, because they had such an angry God, and you had to keep them happy, and there was no way to keep them happy, you know. But if you still try anyway, and you get people who look miserable, you know, they don't trust God. I've been miserable. I know I went through a dark time. I said, where the hell are you? I gave my life for you. Didn't I at least earn getting better? You know, but you, you do, and you, he wakes you up and says, wait a minute, I'll get you there. There's lessons you still have to learn in life. And so I think, how much are we fully alive? You know, one of the other issues we like, and I grew up in an Italian parish, back in New Britain, Connecticut, and there was this big crowd. There was always a bunch of widows in the back church, because when I had to wait, I had to take a bus to school or was by their church, so I'd go in sometimes just to keep warm, if nothing else. And there were all these, these ladies in black. They had killed their husbands and then spent the next 40 years back there uh, saying rosaries and, and watching everybody come into church. And job. Well, they were like, somebody said, oh, they're really holy. I said, no, they're just miserable. And they stood there. You know, that isn't holiness at all. They're just miserable and they're on their knees, you know, cringing before God. God said, I love you. We stand because we believe in the fullness of God, how God, much God loves us. That's why we stand in things, in the fullness of Christ of who we are and what we are. The glory of God is a person fully alive, and that means you're generative, you're inclusive, you're not exclusionary, that you have a sense of yourself, a sense of God's presence in us, and a sense of God's presence everywhere. Therese, who captured that by saying everything is grace. Everything, not some things, everything. And we're called to believe that when we're here at our national shrine. Otherwise, we're not into the good news, the good news of what Jesus did by living our human journey suffering death, being betrayed, and God raising him to life and transforms the universe. We live in a holy and enchanted world, but it's our, it, it's our responsibility to make that happen by the way we treat one another and the way we include everybody and deal with the, the real life. You know, God is in reality, comes to us disguised as our life. And anybody that tries to deny what's going on in our world, in our lives, in our hearts, you know, isn't in touch with God. Then it becomes a phony thing we're doing here. But we're here because we believe in the presence of God who was always and already present in every breath of our life. In making us fully alive, fully engaged, fully loving, fully receiving, fully forgiving, and including. Making us, stretching us, and always making us bigger than we think we are. Jesus promised that whenever we gather together in faith, Abba, our Father, would listen to us, and so let us pray. Let's first of all pray for peace in our world, and wherever people suffer from the violence, the injustice, and the historic misunderstanding of others, especially the people of the Ukraine and the Sudan and our other cities, let us pray to the Lord. Let's gather together in our hearts and pray for those people who need the healing power of the Lord Jesus mentally, emotionally physically, spiritually, or relationally. For them, let us pray to the Lord. I'd like to pray for all the members of the Little Flower Society and for all people who support the life and the ministries of the Carmelites here and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for ourselves that we learn to see through the disappointments and the disillusionments of life and somehow know that God is trying to refine us and test us and get closer to us. Let us pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us pray for our own private and personal intentions. For them, let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for the gift of always understanding or listening to the true prophets who tell us God's truth and not the false prophets who proclaim darkness and doom. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and faithful God, thank you for, for always listening to us 
and we ask you to continue to manifest your presence in our life by responding to the needs that we place here before you and those that lie unspoken and even unknown in the silence of our hearts. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are being prepared and we take up a collection for the maintenance of this shrine, we are, what are we? Yeah, let's go back to 623 and do both verses. 623. I will never forget you, my people. I have carved you in the palm of my hand. I will never forget you. I will not leave you orphan. I will never forget my own. Does a mother forget her baby? Or a woman, the child within her womb? Yet he, yes, even if these forget, I will never forget my. And my sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Holy One, our God. O Lord, may the sacrifice we offer you with joy on this heavenly birthday of St. Irenaeus bring you glory and instill in us a love of the truth so that we may keep the, church, the church's faith inviolate and her unity secure. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. And therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we remember and give thanks that at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, that Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And we remember and give thanks that in that same way, that before that supper was ended, that Jesus took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. and do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, 
for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death, of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity and justice, together with Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop and the entire people that you claim as your own. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Have welcomed them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, <clears throat> with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Therese, with St. Irenaeus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For we join in the sacrifice of Jesus because we know, we believe, and we proclaim through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And inspired by divine teaching, let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from all evil and from all fear, from whatever prevents us from knowing you and from loving one another. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your peace, so that we can live all of our days joyfully awaiting and experiencing the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are you. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Start splitting them out right now. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin, darkness, and division of our world. And blessed are we who are called to this banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. The last few days I was in Nevada, I had to be in Las Vegas, to actually to uh, visit the people that built the shrine for us, you know, the, the Peterson Foundation. It was wonderful sunny. Then we landed last night. I thought the end of the days had come. All the smoke that was here, my God, I couldn't believe it. I thought something had happened while I was gone. But I guess it's blown away. Let us pray. O oh Lord, through these sacred mysteries we pray, give us your compassion in your compassion, an increase of that faith which brought glory to the Bishop St. Irenaeus that he maintained even until death. And may that same faith, faith bring to us who truly follow with justification in your sight. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all days of your life. And let's pray to Mary, our sister in faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let's go forth in peace. Our closing song is 584. Mine eyes have seen the glory. 584. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. He has sampled out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are sore. He has proved the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Thank you for switching.